Now, for centuries, men have been judged by their facial hair, indeed. Some think it's central to a man's virility and associate a big beard with virtues like wisdom, strength, even high <coughs> social status. For others, it's part of their belief and a tenet of their faith. And don't forget there are cultures where facial hair is associated with poor hygiene. Well, in England this week, as we put all that aside, as the annual Beard and Moustache Championships Awards, <laughs> prizes for the finest facial hair around, here's Ryan Clemenson with the story. The world's hairiest men, chin stroke and pose, as competitors gather in Bath in southwest England. So we're allowed to start. Welcome to the British Beard and Moustache Championships. <laughs> we're at the Handlebar Club, which, as the name might suggest, is a club for gentlemen with large moustaches. It was set up more than 65 years ago in a the London theatre and its legacy has grown long and thick. Competitors pay for the privilege to enter the championships. It's all because they want to obtain the ultimate beard bragging rights. Oh, and a trophy. There are different categories for the fuzzy faced competitors. Categories of moustache include natural, English, handlebar and freestyle. Partial beard categories are natural goatee, musketeer, freestyle and sideburns. From Brisbane and Australia. For full beards, competitors have to battle it out in the natural full, natural full with styled moustache and freestyle categories. This year there's a new category called business class beard. It's described as the city gent look. Ooh. The Bath Pavilion draws a large crowd of supporters and cheering fans for this most unusual spectacle. Competitors came from across the country, but there was also a strong international contingent from places like America, Australia, Italy, Norway and Sweden. Everyone I meet is really eccentric, interesting, uh, lots of different people from different walks of life. It's fantastic. There's a great sense of fun and frivolity at the championship. A friendly rivalry where like-minded people can share their passion and express their eccentricity. However, the competition isn't for the shy or retiring because entrants need to show off and engage the audience on stage. It's probably why so many were dressed in flamboyant outfits to match their fabulous facial hair. There were also various props and banners that were used to charm and excite the crowd in an attempt to showcase their facial fuzz. A lot of primping and preening goes on behind closed doors before the competition takes place. But competitors are barred from using extensions or hairpins, although wax and hairspray are allowed in some categories. As well as awarding prizes for the finest fuzz going, the championships are also staged to encourage and celebrate standards of excellence in the growth, design and presentation of facial hair. I'll tell you what, that puts some brothers to shame. It does indeed. I said there's some serious <laughs> facial hair going Fantastic. on there. Well, you know what? We've got some here in the studio. Joining us now are two gentlemen who took part in the championships, putting themselves forward with their rather smart-looking moustaches and beards. Good evening, Jimmy and Giovanni. Indeed. Well, and of welcome course, to the show. Jimmy Bearface. Yeah. Bearface. Bearface. Indeed. Jimmy Bearface. How's it growing? Oh, <laughs> very good. How's it growing? <laughs> Long. Long. <laughs> and thick. Listen, um, I mean, you know, lots of people associate a beard with, you know, some are faith, background, others are just wacky. So in some cultures, we mentioned earlier, you know, it's just an, not good hygiene. What made you decide to go for this? Whew. Uh, well, I was uh, with my brother. We were entering uh, something called a Spartan race, which is one of these mud obstacle type yes, races. Yes, of course. And, and at the time, we thought, well, if we're going to do it, let's go and look like Spartans. Wow. So we started growing the beards and um, we did the race. And then afterwards, thought, yeah, it's, it's going to stay. Let's keep it and just keep growing it. And uh, I mean, yours is not just the beard as well. You've got an extremely <laughs> handsome, curly moustache there as well. Fantastic. Um, on, a, on, a, on a realistic level, like on a day-to-day -day level, because that's not something you can take off. I mean, that is something that's fixed, it's there, you know, and it's, it's not going anywhere. In terms of day-to-day -day life, going to work, mixing friends and family, everyone's accepting it or funny stares wherever you go? Generally, some, some odd looks. Most people are, you know, I get some people laughing as they walk past, which yeah. is always amusing, but yeah, it makes people smile, which is a good thing. Yeah. Giovanni, I mean, it is the in thing. Beards are the in thing at the moment. Beards yeah, and moustaches. But moustaches of mm -hmm. that level is something a bit unusual, isn't it? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been growing it for 15 years, so I'm not that kind of years. fashion thing for me, but yeah. Wow. And, and, and you, why did I you decide this, to grow it? Well, I mean, he's it's obviously just laziness. Talk- <laughs> but you've, but, you've but, obviously gone round the rest of the FAs. But we were talking, we were looking at that clip there from the Beard and Moustache Championships. Yeah. Now you beat the chap that we saw, one of them, you beat him into second place. Yeah. So you're second for very good. But you got thrown out! <laughs> yeah, you know, they don't get me. They I don't mean, get you, huh? No. They said it was too natural. Yeah, too natural. There wow. You go. You see, you go, you, are you going to re-enter? Are you going to come up with some Yeah, yeah, every scheme? time, every time. Every time, different clothes. I mean, as, as, <laughs> as, as Naeem was saying, um, beards are very trendy at the moment. I mean, everybody, you know, I mean, I, I started growing my beard about 15 years ago. It's a good beard. And it, it wasn't very trendy then. It's just um, a little kid's beard compared it, to you it guys, is, yeah. I'll tell you. But, but, but Jimmy, I mean, you know, uh, now every celebrity, or, you know, pop stars, rock stars, Hollywood stars, sports people, rugby players, well, everyone's got a beard at the moment. Re- facial hair is really making a comeback, isn't it? A big comeback. But, it's, it, I mean, people often ask us, you know, what's going to happen if the, if the bubble bursts? And it, beards have been growing forever. You know, f- absolutely forever. So, you know, trends come and go, and there might be, you know, a slight decline in people having beards, but there's always going to be beard wearers. You know? what, what, what's it like walking into a competition room with that number <laughs> of guys, and you think, wow, that looks good. That's interesting. You know, what, what's it like seeing other beard fanatics, or moustache fanatics for that matter? Not really. I mean, I mean, I get excited with other people, you know, because, yeah, they're always, and especially if someone is really into it, so they, you well, see, <laughs> you, sm- you can smell them when you enter the competition. But, but, First thing you get, oh, what do you use? Oh, that's spicy. Oh, so, yeah, that's smoky. Oh, that's hot. Ah, well, so well, it's kind of, you know, involves every single sense of, you know, ladies, you can oh, touch no, it, you can smell it. Ladies, can, well, what do the ladies think? Ladies over there, you've kept very quiet over there. Well, what do we think about is all it your facial tea? hair? It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Diplomatic. They're looking at each other. Uh, it's interesting. It's impressive. It's Thank impressive. you. Well, look, Thanks. We'll we'll, we've got something very special coming up because we've got our homeopath with us, and 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 you know we're going to do an experiment tonight mm-hmm. with, with the two of you. So stay with us. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely. I'm worried now. <laughs> now, 30 countries and 120 competitions show their skills. Competitors show their skills at a world championship that is truly one of a kind. You see, it's not all about hustling with opponents and tussling and tackling them down. We aren't talking about teams chasing balls around aimlessly or aiming missiles at targets. We'll let Sadia Chaudhry explain the idea. Bright sunshine and lots and lots of space. That's what you find as competitors at this tournament ready up their chainsaws and set their bulldozers on standby. This is the World Logging Championship and we're at the finals here of the 2014 tournament. The 120 participants are professionals who fell trees for a living. They're all forestry workers and come here to be tested on five disciplines at the event. These are felling a tree to a predetermined mark, changing the chain against the clock and cutting the limbs of a tree trunk. There's also this incredible task, cutting discs out from the tree trunk. In one part of the competition, you have to cut cleanly and straight from above and under the trunk. And in another, the job is to cut a precision disc. It all begs the question, why? And I bet some of you are thinking about the environment and wasting paper and sustainable forests. Well, the idea isn't just to fell trees. The competition is all about foresters and lumberjacks to show, in a fascinating way, just how challenging forestry work is. The competition started in 1970 and used to be held annually. It now takes place every two years, and this week's tournament marks its 31st. The town of Brienz, here in Switzerland, hosts it, and each time trades in its usual artist studios for an open-air arena. Instead of carving knives, it's chainsaws that are the centre of attention. A combined score from all of the challenges are then rated in an overall standings before one person is named the winner of the Logging World Cup. Living the Life can tell you that this year's champion is Yuli Huber, who took the crown for Germany, while Switzerland and Italy came in respectively second and third. All of the competitions are held in this spacious open-air arena, near the Forester's Lodge of Brienz, located directly on the lake. So, as well as gaming and enthusiasm, spectators are treated to the luscious surroundings of the tournament, a space like no other, where the peaceful landscape is only interrupted by the occasional... Timber! It's not all fun and games. The tournament is taken extremely seriously by the competitors, who spend weeks carefully planning what tools and machinery they need so that they can, touch wood, 
get that all-important advantage over everyone else. That's a man's job. It is. Isn't it? Logging down trees. That's a, that's a man's skinning, job to maintain his beard as well. Doing that. It is indeed. And on that note, I think you look great. What lumberjack you, shirt. You Thanks. actually make beard maintenance products. Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Um, handmade? Uh, yeah, handmade. You bare must face. have had a boom in the market recently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we started uh, before, you know, it went big, and yeah, we were right. What kind of stuff, what, what do you use? Um, so, a mixture of, of, of different blends of oils, so apricot mm. kernel oil, coconut oil, argan oil, jojoba, and then different essential oils. Well, we've got our own concoction, Cyber, we've got our expert indeed. here today. Uh, Sabra, let's see what we can do here. We have <coughs> organic virgin coconut oil. Mm. Have a little mix of that, go on. Extra that. virgin. We, we only about <laughs> oh, and what are you mixing it with? So that's with some coke, uh, rosemary essential oil, rosemary, okay, rosemary. Okay. which is wow. a hair stimulant. Okay, oh, hair stimulant. I need some of that. I could use that yeah, on top. I could do with that. <laughs> I could use and, that and, on top. And you use products as well, Jimmy? No, no, usually not. I don't usually no, no. No. So, I could tell Jimmy, you, you're I'm not the best customer. <laughs> Giovanni, I could tell you, you are au naturel, aren't you? <clears throat> au naturel, that's, that's, yeah, that's the exactly. thing with you, you see. Fantastic. So how many, how many okay. drops are we putting in here? Probably a couple of drops, that's it. A couple of drops. Here we go. So it's, okay, it's Jimmy. Supposed to be sort of like are you going to lean gonna forward? Go some of this here. Let's I'll, go I'll, for it. I'll put a little bit in your hand. Wow. Okay. You just, go on. There you go. Rub it wow. in and then. And rub what it do you do? It's Let's very see. natural. I'll tell you what. If it for, falls off. In for a penny. In for a pound. Let's if go. it falls off, game's over. <laughs> oh dear. Very good. I think I'm just going to. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to be a little bit more modest thing. than you. It's supposed to be. Do you have any want to try that? See if it's any good for you. It's very natural. It's very natural. I'd like to offer you some, but your beard's just not up it's to just it, not man. It's it. just not. Okay. Can you put it in your hair as well? It's not you can put it in yeah, your hair. You can. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice I actually put some on my uh, hair. On, on a serious yeah. note, I you actually use some. this as moisturiser yep. on my head and my Fantastic. face. I use. Uh, How does it oil. feel? Giovanni, you said that you don't use any product. How is it? You're ready for what? Fantastic, brilliant. Well, look. well, listen, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, <laughs> brilliant guest tonight. Really loved it. We'll get your hands washed in a minute. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't know. Well, okay. sadly, that's the end of the show for tonight. A massive thank you to our guest tonight.